And that's all to the that's all to the comments of what's been just uh for the original relics uh one of them being uh the good record of the 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 few pieces of the trail that I think are still on the same lot of the same thing. Pretty good uh pretty good record. So Oh yeah, yeah, so we can start to have this to the different to the Uh, I, I think it's my fault. My opinion is that uh, basically we need to make this stuff up to this because uh, all of the uh, things that we've done are the duty of the You can't touch the entire thing that you need to touch it. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons why I suppose to do it because there's kinds of reasons why it's the fact that it's the good thing. You can still start trying to do it some more for you. But uh, the thing that really, the, the thing that really clears it to me is that nobody has come up with a, a method uh, of imparting the uh, We know it's not, it's not to be, it's not for the it's not very much something to me or whatever. Uh, it's, uh, it, 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 there, there's no uh, open human Principle of the way we want to live is a way that has to be tightened into the system that has to be a price that has to be tightened into the system. And so that leaves it, unless they do, unless they find some way to repeat it to the exact same thing, then there's only one option. And it is sort of a one time deal. And obviously, it's pretty difficult to do that. That's the only that's the only option left. Authorities have refused so far to provide that to be tested. We've only allowed the, the cloth to be tested in the places where they allowed the, the cloth to be tested, have been in places where um, it's a little bit undecided as whether that original part of the cloth is. So, uh, as they say, as far as the cloth is concerned, it's concerned uh, as long as they cannot reproduce the effects, as long as they cannot. Uh, we do exactly what is done, and there's only one option left, and that is uh, some uh, very unique uh, experience, uh, which of course would get the um, reference to Christ. So feel free, please feel free to grab coffee, donuts, whatever. Okay. This is uh, 
this is uh, for you to see here. This is 30 minutes of post-hack and substance access. It used to be called by some of our old, older members here, it used to be called Dump the Press. So, very, very few, very few of my brethren uh, will attend something like this, but uh, I like to give myself a chance on to see if I'm cool. So, anyway, uh, we were talking to some of about a startup firm. We also talked about uh, financial economy. Uh, Ruth had a good comment about them finding artifacts of uh, Israel and Palestine, uh, controlling the fact of 185,000 soldiers. Uh, being uh, destroyed, killed, uh, in the name of the Nazarene Army, they were beginning to take a pile. Uh, and uh, even, even they have also discovered uh, and networks and societies that talk about the assassination of the Nazarene by Stuart. Uh, he was so hated by his fellow that by the time he got back, uh, he was assassinated in the Roman Tower. Uh, so that's good to see. You have something to write. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Questions, comments, concerns, considerations, consternations, tragedies, disasters, disasters, various kinds of things, points, and stickers. What do you got for me? Anybody can do it. Question for the day. Pleasing God. How do we please God? What's usual when we think of pleasing someone or something? What's the what's the usual thought is what what's what's going on? Trickery, theft, okay. How can can you think of a can you think of a time in the Bible where God was pleased? But but don't limit yourself to that. That definition that we, we just uh, we just came up with. There's kind of another way of looking at this. Please see the God. Please see the God. What is the God? What is the God? Ah, okay. Good point. Good point. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's just kind of a good. That's kind of a good uh, idea. And I think the fire kind of a huge guy. I think kind of a huge concern. If you will, uh, I can't put it for something that uh, you know they told you to give a uh, piece of property to the church and they made you step back so that that was not the case. Um, so yeah, that's the type of thing. And this is not exactly the same way. Uh, let me throw out a name to you. I don't think we'll come to my Gideon. Gideon. How did Gideon increase God? No, no, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Do you remember the two tests? Anybody remember the two tests? Wet and dry. Okay. So one time he said he wanted the fleece to be wet and the ground to be. Dry. The other time he wanted the fleece to be dry and the ground to be wet. Yeah. What did this, 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 oh, this judge is sick, by the way, judge is sick. Um, what happened right before this judge? What happened right before this judge? Didn't God, you know, God called him, yeah, but didn't God also give him a great victory? Right? Yeah. Oh, and they give him a, this is toward the end of the chapter. This is toward the end of chapter 6. A bunch of other things have already happened. He has already asked God for something. He has already asked God for, for uh, a proof uh, that, that God is talking to him and that God will do what he says. He has already received anything from God. Okay? Already. And so here again, uh, it, 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 it comes around to this moment. And now he says, after all this proof that he's got, that God is true and God is right and God he tests him, and again, not one, but twice. Right? Why do you suppose it was that God didn't strike him dead? I mean, can't you think of examples where people have tested God uh, in the Bible and uh, wound up uh, on the short end of a stick? I mean, 
think of anything, you think of, uh, um, you know, a Bible, you know, a lot of these books, you know, to the right. Yeah. And they're different before the defendants keep the key and different, you know. I didn't have a case of the 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 they need to start to do the But here, the beauty is, you know, the patient is in the beginning of the case of Christ, so the story of the sin, the patient is in the case of the sin, of the sin, the patient is in the first step, and the patient is in the middle of the second step. So, how is it that, so I think it's because if you look at the second step, it's sort of back to the first step, what it's going to be, so you can tell how, so, 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 uh, but, but this is not a simple we should follow. We should not please God. We should not play pleases before God. We should stand back and say, okay, God, okay, do your thing. Prove to me that you're listening to me. Prove to me that you are who you say you are. Prove to me that you have the power that you say you have. Use the system so that we're in the system that we're in the opposite and not to that. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Any other questions? All right, let's, let's move on. We are in the book of Exodus. We are in chapter 25. All right, guys, we're ready to move on to new pages, brand new pages for you to mark up, for you to use for third page, pointers, or whatever you want to do. It's totally up to you how you want to do it. You're more than welcome. And I even have them done a whole piece of the movie to go for it. How about that? That's exactly what's going on. Well, you can, but then you get all blown in and it's too hard to read the print. Did you grab one, Bruce? Here you go. Oh, okay, here we go. So, let's read a little bit first, and then we'll proceed from there. We are at verse uh, 23, chapter 25, which is on page 129 in your faith part of the study Bible, so. And here we go. Let's just read down there for it. So, so here we're talking about another piece of equipment that's in the cabin. If you show me the table of the case of wood, the cubic long and one cubic wide, and you have to decide the number of cubic anywhere from 18 uh, to 25 inches. Okay. This is the normal cubic, elbow to middle finger, royal cubic. Little thing is to correct it. You shall overlay it with pure gold and make the gold golden around it. You shall make sure it's turned and have a ring of a pink dress around it and make a gold border for the ring around it for about six inches and a You shall make your four gold rings for it and put rings in the four corners or on the four seats. The rings shall be close to the rim and over to the poles to carry to the table. So that the fold of a piece of wood and overlay them with gold. Imagine, imagine carrying this chest, which remember is, is gold, and the lid is not covered in gold, but the lid is gold, and the angels, the cherubim, are gold. And remember, the cherubim are yin big. Okay? So, and gold weighs like lead. Now, imagine the folds are covered with gold, 
and you don't have to grab onto that when you're sweating in. Okay? So this is not something that's going to be easy to say, right? You shall make the fold, okay, and you shall make the dishes and the pans and the jars and the bowls with which you pour great offerings and to make them pure gold. So there again, this is not gold overlay or dipped in gold. This is a solid uh, gold. Okay, last verse of that section, gold. And you shall set the bread of the presence on the table before me at all times. So this is something that's going to be continuous uh, from the time of the altar is completed all the way to the altar So let's look at the notes. Top of page 189. Uh, my my uh, notes here, uh, again, I know I found them. I know I know I found them. I wasn't going to be making all of these uh, messages and all of these points for pieces, but so I apologize. I lied. I, I did. You know, I thought this was going to go really fast. But the more I looked into it and the more I studied it, uh, the more I found this fascinating stuff. And I thought it was even something that I could never have thought of. And I didn't have to do this with the defining features. And otherwise, I don't know what's We are perhaps so much surprised at the random order in which the details of the tablets and the speaker are given to Moses. There seems to be a lack of logical progression. We understand why the Bible introduces the Ark of Moses as it symbolizes the presence of the Lord. God begins by himself. You know, we might think, if we're describing this thing, we might think that going from God to God is the Bible. We might think of describing the covering of the tabernacle, you know, the wall of the curtain on it, and then uh, the things in the court that are the you know, the burning on the and the people on and all that that the whole thing. It doesn't do that. It works from the inside out. It works from the feet of your feet, there and the house of the covenant, and you work outside. He works up towards the end. What does this tell us right away? What good works of being centered on? Work that must be centered on God. And then what do we say about the house of the covenant itself? The house of the covenant is the symbol of whom? Jesus Christ, come on, folks. Jesus Christ. Okay? And, and it's a symbol also of the gospel. You've got the law inside. So what do you have on top of the law? On top of the law, you've got the gospel. The mercy seat, right? The same as seat. Right? And so this is the center seat of worship. The center seat of believing worship, Old Testament and New Testament, is no different. It's exactly the same. And the centerpiece has to be Jesus Christ as the gospel. The centerpiece has to be the mercy and grace of God uh, revealed in Jesus Christ and His work. It has to be salvation by grace alone through faith. Okay? That's what has to be the center. This is what's wrong with most contemporary worship today. Most contemporary worship today is not the same. Look at the uh, look at the song, such as the first song. Such as the real crazy song that God said, I would take you to the place that I would take you. And I, I told you before, I'll tell you again, go online for that. Find a contemporary service. I challenge you. The church in Jesus Christ. Church in Rome. And the church in Rome. And the confession of Jesus Christ. I challenge you to survive this message. Why? Because it's contemporary service that you will be affected. You're, if you're going to try to keep up with the Hallelujah, praise the Lord, okay? You're going to be tired from the whole thing. Okay? In, in, in my book, the only person that ought to be tired at the end of the service is the pastor. Okay? The rest of you ought to be pretty relaxed. The rest of you ought to be pretty chill to be to you. Okay? The rest of you ought to be uh, ready to go out and go to work. You have your relaxation. You have your comfort. The only guy that was uh, on the east of the field on the street at that point was uh, the guy in the pulpit at the end of the day. That's it. Uh, I can't say anything else. Okay. All right. Um, God is fine with me. 
where the starting point, the first uh, offering altar would have been the first offering altar. And, and see, this is what I say. You know, I, I look at this stuff differently. I look at the furniture, you know, and the marshmallows, and, and the greens and coals, you know, and I think to myself, yeah, oh, there's not a whole lot of here for people. And then, and then and then all of a sudden, I start thinking to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's a reason why the most sight is to be altered. That is to be an outward offering on the outside of the world. Right? The reason why, because if, if worship is to be new and sinner, then what can we do? And that's what God wanted, and that's what His will was for people to do. God Himself is the goal and center of all else to see from Him. It is clear that any alienation and revelation has been given to the Son. God said to the God Celestial, the Word of the Electric from the building of the house, the building of the tabernacle, the building of the temple, 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 the building of the temple. Number two. But when the chain of progression to revelation has been at time six, the table is over. The main purpose of the table is to show that God is constantly and continually providing for his people. Thus, the main whole bread. Huh? Thus, the whole concept here. This whole thing is to reflect God's provision for us. Showbread, holy, consecrated bread, was placed in the sanctuary of the temple, or the temple of his God, to symbolize God's presence and his provision for his people. The ritual always provided 12 loaves of bread for each of the 12 tribes in the midst of Israel. It was called showbread because it was kept continually before God's presence in his tabernacle. The showbread symbolized the continued presence of the Lord, the presence more vital than one single other. And the people's dependence on God's provision for their spiritual activity. And so here the sense that the access to the food, the food system, the food system, and the food set up by the Lord. But in any case, if this is something that the people would be cognizant of, they would have to be able to open up. This is to show God's provision for his people. Number four, of course, God did not need to be fed with this bread based upon humans. So rather, he fed it such in practice that by this assembly of religion, they put out tribute to food and flowers as a sacrifice to the soul of God. Has no relationship to the present age of the children of God. I've, I've heard this, I've read this, I've seen this many times. You know, the crazy Bible passage out there in the Christ humanity, a lot of them will say, well, that's where the Jews got the idea. The Jews got the idea from the Jews. Ancient uh, Egyptian and Egyptian Roman ancient and uh, ancient Persian uh, and such and so by uh, bringing a food of tribute to the bread and then using them uh, at the altar to purify their sacrifices. That, that was from the thousands of things that were done. Whether or not those things predate Moses here in the 14th, 15th century, 14th century BC, that is just not the point. Neither is the point where the Lord is more than we have known about those things. That was written out about the Lord Jesus Christ and the different parts of the Old Testament. That is just not the point. Where do you think comes to us here from God? This is not something that comes from the Christ who came from God for all of our sins. So you know, this is something we should be aware of here in, in, in the part of our humanity, in the part of the world that we live in. And so, uh, that we know, of course, about the bread of this world. Please understand this is a reference to the Bible of the Lord. No matter whether the Lord of Christ has gone and he dressed it up, dressed it up like a Satan, or dressed it up as a Christian, or dressed it up as a, a sinful representation of some a biblical concept, it is certainly not. Right? It comes directly from the Aztec and Toltec pagan belief. And this is why when you go to a cemetery here in the South Chicago or the States, you go to a cemetery, uh, you will see uh, bread and you will see uh, beer and you will see cake and you will see all kinds of things left out uh, for the ancestors. And so this is a direct relation to 
the work of our lives and the other of the people uh, that are going to be the to the next four and we need to be significant to them and not to be significant. We need to make sure that people understand that we are now as the God of the church. There's an older brother and sister, and I have been talking to them, and I hope that they can get their understanding of them as they can see and to see them and understand them. This is, of course, very common in what they have said in their Bible down in the South America. But they teach the Lord, of course, about different uh, truths, and the truth taught their religion. But understand their catechesis, their catechism at that time, the 1500s, was nothing like uh, the Catholic catechism we are talking about here, and nothing like that, and nothing like the old Orthodox catechism we are talking about, nothing like even uh, catechism. Please understand that the, uh, the priest that came along the Roman priest, some of the Jesuits, some of the Franciscans, Please understand that their, their desire was to have the people converted and then they were sent back to heaven. And so many of them were kind of challenged about being accepted for a new power and instruction and a different hope and a better time. They were told the truth, they were told about uh, the triune God, they were told about Jesus, they were told about what Jesus did, and what the Lord had told them, and they had to listen to the Lord and what he did with them, and a bunch of other things. But uh, they weren't really catechized. And so what happened in this lesson is the teacher goes on to the next conflict. Uh, the people took their native religion and they took Romanism and they put it together and they came up with a, a, a homogenous, actualized sort of a, a kind of religion. So they all felt like the next conflict. So those things for a minute. You see Christian Cemetery, you see lots of crosses everywhere. And in the East, you see a lot of the booze or, 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 or bread or, or tortillas or you know, tamales or whatever. Please understand that goes back to the time. Number five, the, bread, the Bible uses bread as an image of the word of God. You know that, right? You just said, I am the bread of life, but you know that Jesus is the word and the word is God. Which is the main lesson of the bread on this table. You would have expected that after giving Moses the instructions about the construction of the ark, God would have told him about the ark of Jesus, the place where worship and sex was brought together. But God considers the next priority to be the name of Jesus. So even though God starts out with himself as the Savior, he understands and appreciates our need for worship. Our need to praise Him, our need to come before Him. Right? This is the same reason that God provided us with sacrifice. Think about it. Right? Human beings are tactile beings, tactile. We like to see, feel, and touch. We like to, uh, we like to experience in a tactile way pieces of our feet and religion. And so it gives us the water and the oxygen, a sanctified by the word, to give us the bread and the wine, and then we eat the Lord's Supper, and then consecrated into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And he gives us absolution in the hearing of his people. Right? Sometimes people will say, well, there's no physical element of absolution. Well, uh, that may be true in a, in a pure and worldly materialistic sense. But why did they end up in Samson's, the odd church in Samson, and the uh, apology of the Samson? Why do they speak of absolution as a sacrament? They speak of it as a sacrament because it is something that will be experienced. It is something you feel. As I, uh, as, I, uh, as I told you many times, I cannot tell you I have a, an experience this where people come for confession and absolution. They start confessing absolution in my church. And when people come for private uh, confession and absolution, I experience that feeling. Okay? When they are one on one with their pastor, they are one on one with me. And I tell them, uh, you are forgiven in the name of Christ. Come and pray for us. They may not speak to you like you are looking right in the eye. Okay? There is a definite uh, connection there. And it's not enthusiasm, it's not pride or arrogance, it's a connection with the word. Right? Otherwise, why would Jesus have said, whatever sins you forgive, they have been forgiven. Those are tense things. Have been forgiven. 
All we are doing is being the stead of Christ. Okay. So, uh, God can say this in a prayer. Know this word, know the word of God, and the mind of man does not live on the world, but in every word that comes from us in the world. Before. The bread is the symbol of God's real need. Jesus can put it on the bread of life. When he comes to me, I'll never get hungry. If you believe in me, I'll never be thirsty. Jesus is also the very word. So his word is the visible bread of life that God gave us here today. So you see what God is doing with his uh, God, and I don't know if you call it, but it's a God of the Son of God. He is speaking. He's speaking his people how to worship him. He's teaching people what is important, what is the priority of their life. He's teaching people what they should seek when they go to towards him. Okay. The number one thing we should seek is the word. And the number one thing in the word we should seek is, of course, the gospel. Law signs, law digest, law curbs us, law fills us with singing, all that, that's great, that's wonderful, that's fine. But the gospel must preach on our ministry. If the gospel does not preach on our ministry, it will preach on God's heart. And it's not the gospel. Top of the next page, number six. So, the element of sacrifice is present in the children. The bread is the bread of life, symbolizing the person and work of our Lord Jesus Christ, not only in connection with the home of our sin, but it's the power that helps us to move the fellowship of God after our sins have been forgiven. We do not do good in order that our sins are forgiven. We do good because our sins are forgiven. That's a huge difference between us and our women, brothers and sisters. A huge difference between us and our Orthodox brothers and sisters. A huge difference between us and even our reformed, our days, and our Calvinistic brothers and sisters. Many of you in Calvinism, you do good work to show that God has suggested you the best. In Armenianism, you do good work in order to prove that you have been corrected. In Romanism, you do good work in order to pay off for some of your sins so that you don't have to take so much time to do any other further for you. So, this is this is their problem. Okay? This is not what the Bible does for Number seven, table in the tabernacle is the table of God that spread for the cross. The sustenance of fellowship. David mentions this in the 23rd Psalm when he says, You prepare a table before me, the purpose of my enemies, to anoint my head with oil, and the cup overflow. The simple and things all so wonderful that the cross is for the enemies of the Lord of Supper. The Lord's Supper is not only spiritual sustenance, it is fellowship. With whom is it fellowship first and foremost? Good morning. Thank you. Fellowship with Him. Fellowship with Christ. That's first and foremost. And then fellowship with one another. Okay. It's called communion for both of those reasons. It's called communion because it's a union with Christ. Okay? In which and under, as we say, the first and the Lord. But it's also a communion with God in general, in that we can pray for majesty, and also uh, with each other. Uh, uh, so, uh, David comments here. Prepare a table before me. What does that mean to prepare a table? Prepare a table. It is just, you know, you know, how many times you said that song? Huh? You said that song at every funeral. You said that song a thousand times in your life. What what is what is it what is it say to you? Prepare a table. Anybody? You're welcome to your guests. All right. So so if God prepares a table for us, so he's welcome. That's good. Good thought. Another thought. What's that? Sitting down with God. Remember we had that in the previous chapter, remember? Where all the elders of Israel literally sat down and ate with God? Right? He ate with some visible manifestation of God. Wow. Right? But what else does it mean? If God prepares the table, what kind of preparation is it? It's 
God compares the people to two types of people looking for it. If God compares the people, what kind of preparation is it? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So you, you, you said, no, I, I am the creator, I am the preserver, I am okay. Yeah, I'm the one who's preparing the table. Again, if God is preparing the table, what kind of table is it? It's called the spread on the table. Okay? Perfect. Okay? And so, how would you say that? You say that abundance, right? You prepare a table, meaning the table is satisfactory to the man. It is it has everything on it that you would possibly need. Okay? So the table is you if God compares that table to everything is there. So the bread on the table of children is not there just simply saying, well, this is all you get. All you get is bread and water. Okay? People in prison get that. That's not the point. It is again a show, okay, the bread of life. I will provide for you everything you need. Remember, we were talking yesterday, and I had a class yesterday in Bible teaching. We were talking about uh, how uh, what Jesus was talking about when he said, uh, God will provide for you as he provides for the birds and the flowers. Remember what we said? What's uh, not an exception, but what's part of that? God will either provide you enough to live or. Or we will get you there. Okay? So again, again, this is the same thing here. Okay? That says it shows that I will provide for you. Now, I can provide for you food, so you can make it be But what do I do like to do? What do I make you live for your food? How cool is that? The second half of this is a real exception. I mean, we are, oh, 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 how tough would that be? What would be all good luck? You know, we just had a funeral on Friday. Okay? And, and as I said, one of the things about you know, the guy uh, who passed away there, one of the things about him was, uh, you know, I'm looking for rest. He was a guy who could never rest. Never. He used to walk through some of the old things that the Bible class would give me sometimes an hour early. Okay? And he would say to me, he would apologize. He said, sorry, Pastor, I just. And I have nothing else to do with it. Oh, and then come down here. And you know I would be here. I knew you would probably be on before you would come. But how much he was really looking forward to being able to do that, but never been able to do that. How can I go so fast? How can I get to 149 and still be doing it? That wouldn't be very nice of it. Right? But, right. So God says, I will provide for you, which means I will also provide for you a time to get out of this mess at exactly the optimal moment. The optimal moment for your faith and the optimal moment for my people. Okay? I told people this, I tell people this all the time. Something that elderly people get up their knees and they have to have a nice day with them. And I tell them all the time, you're still healthy, but God has something to do with you. God has somebody for you to hear the gospel with. God has somebody for you to get to learn the gospel from you in some way. Maybe not directly from your mouth, but in some way. You're here to say one more prayer for the church or for the pastor. You're here one more time for, for whatever purpose. Right? And when that's done, you're, you're, you're out of here. You know, if that's, if that's finished when you're 19, guess what? You're out of here. And if it's finished when you're 99, you're not a good Okay? So, uh, that's what the table of sober is looking for here. Uh, number three, our daily life in the presence of God is based on the death of Jesus Christ. The table then stands for fellowship with God and for all that is needed for this fellowship. It is a symbol of God's grace. You know, the Jews turned it around as they do with so many other things and they turned it into another world. This was their main problem from the, from the very beginning to the very end. This was their, still their problem today. Okay. 
holy and symbols of God's grace into law and legalism. And this, of course, is a problem in the Christian church. When we turn things into what is part of God's grace, we turn it into a passing point of the law, which is a misuse of God's grace and love. Um, this is, the bread is not for him. So when you present that bread on the table of full bread, again, it's not for God to eat. And, and, and what, what is a good uh, example of this? What can you think? Can you think of a story in the Old Testament that, that really hammers home your point? Not that uh, a story even that God or that Jesus used. What story reminds you that this bread is not for God, but for me? Aside from the fact that the Levites are going to eat it at the end of the week, so let's get that from the Remember the story of the David never chased by Saul. He and his companions are hiding out. All right? They starve them. What do they do? They do they do they do What's that? They ate the children. Right? They went into the town or the temple and they ate the children. And they ate the children. And then Jesus uses this against the Pharisees. Remember? He says, hey, I do not know. You do not have to wait to the cold. When you talk, when you were a kid, you were in the synagogue school. You know? Or I went to a Hebrew school. When you were a kid, you were in the synagogue school. What was reserved only for the priest? Okay? So don't, don't be sitting there and telling me that my disciples can't eat my bread on the Sabbath, or that my disciples can't eat what I want to eat, or, you know, fill in the blank, whatever. Whatever tough place the Pharisees were. Yeah, this is not a community. 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 But there are exceptions. This is not mean that God is with you on this. This is not mean that God is some, you know, uh, uh, silly weather, uh, fly by the way, kind of God. He has general principles, and the general principles, of course, are always up there. Number nine, when God said to Moses, I will dwell among them, he meant more than just the present wisdom. He wanted an intimate fellowship with his people. Let the earth tells us that God is present in his glory. The table tells us that he wants to draw us into his glory and share his glory with us. Again, you set a table for me. And the whole presence of my enemies, of course, means the undeserved in this life as we deal with our old Adam, as we deal with the world and our flesh. So God wants to take the fellowship with us. Okay. And I was watching the program the other day, and I was asking some interesting questions with some friends of mine, but I was there to tell you some of the short talks from that. He thinks it's a guy that I think is going to have to think about what he's going to have to think about. One of the things that he mentioned, too, was he, he was, he was uh, talking about the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, whatever, uh, the way that people have to limit themselves before God. Uh, and then are looking again at uh, uh, some worship people to get a few things as well as the church. You know, ha! Ah, I'm Pastor Fred! I got a word out there! Right? And you've got to take the cut off, right? And you flip flop, and you want to be quick, but you don't want to be quick. Well, you want to be cool, and you want to be cool. And all that good kind of stuff. And the guy made the point. He said, What are we doing? What are we doing? We're, 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 we're just accommodating ourselves to the world. Right? Uh, what are we telling our people? We're telling our people that the office of the ministry is not the same. 
We're telling them that they're trying to call to us. It's just like Joel and Tony and Joel, you know, walking on the street. Okay, we don't know what we're doing. Now, did we take Joel, Tony and Harry and make them call to us? Pretty good. Okay? But if we were to do that, like, let's say, you know, we've got 150 or something like that, we're going to spend it right now.
Well, number two, we read more about the children in Leviticus, where God says to Moses, take on the flower, and they fell with the bread, and the food, 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 if you want to go and start to do it at the holy place, because it is a more holy site than the regular sphere of the Austin and the Lord of the Christ. So again, uh, there's, there's other details that Moses did uh, not go into at this point in the story of Exodus, and it shows that for later on. But this is it. Now, what surprises you about the layout of the 12 books? Is there anything about the layout two rows of six steps? What might you expect? What are two other, I'm thinking of two other configurations you might expect? What's one of the two configurations you might expect? Moved about twelve, yeah. Like around the Lord's Supper, last year, Supper. Oh yeah, I don't know. I didn't think about that. I thought about that. I thought about that. I thought about that. I thought about that. You do. You get it through. Absolutely. What's the number? How about two tablets? One, two, three, six, three, and seven. The first table for God. Second table. Yeah, but that wouldn't work, would it? Because with the gospel, that's law. So, what's another table? What's another uh, layout that you might see? How about two of ten? You might see a set of two of ten. Or that's that table. Two of ten. Okay, okay, okay. two. Again, one gospel, ten, number of completeness, okay. Two and ten, maybe the two sides to the left and the ten to the right. But then again, you would think, eh, that's not really what I kind of like to have on the bank of the earth. Right, right, right. I'm not going to have to go off on that. But, yeah, okay. Let's move on. There's no specific mention here next to this of the symbolic significance of the number 12, but it's obvious that the 12 rows represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Again, that's part of the Leviticus matter. In the light of Jesus' explanation of himself as being the bread of life, which is broken in order to give life to the world, this representation of the 12 tribes by 12 rows of bread and food of the world takes on meaning. This makes it a sense. Of course, I mean, broken in the sense of both bones, but broken in the sense of children. So, of course, we have uh, significance here in the world. Number 12. Earlier, God had said that the people would be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. This was priesthood, but not only mean that they would have to be ready to have revelation of themselves to the lost world, but it also meant that they had to be his bread for the world. You ever think of yourself as that? You ever think of yourself as God's bread for the world? I mean, the world is God's bread. For us, what words do the unbelievers have? Well, they have access to the Bible, but if they're unbelievers, they're most likely not going to be reading the Bible. What becomes their bread? Huh? Okay, certainly, as, as Paul says, you know, creation uh, testifies about that. Right? But what else? We do. We do. Folks, you. What? Uh, this is something that you know, Christians don't dwell on that. Jesus tells us we are the light of the world. Yes, He is the light of the world, but He also tells us He's still alive. We are the light of the world. Believe it. He also says we are the salt of the earth. What else are we? We are the bread also. Okay? Because if you're an unbeliever and you don't delay it, believe in the Bible, you don't trust uh, God's word, you don't look at that as anything different than uh, maybe even a failed history book. Okay? Where's the bread? Not where's the beef, but where's the bread? Okay? How is the community out there going to get the gospel? Sure, they can listen to my radio talk, 
Okay? And I'm trying to make all every single one of my radio spots big gospel orientations, big gospel stuff. I don't take on, you know, controversies and all kinds of stuff. I just get with the gospel. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what's going to be the bread of life for the people in the community? You are. You are the witness. You are the soul. You are the light. Okay? You are the one by your actions, by what you say, by how you live, by what you do. You are going to be the one, hopefully, to attract them by God's people to the gospel. Okay? That's, the, that's the point. Back in the next page, number 13, the priesthood was to be sacrificial, and were meant to be the sacrifice, which was Jesus sacrificed himself because he was the bread of life. God gave Israel bread, but they would become bread. Every blessing is given to us is intended to make us a blessing. Understand that. So, this is a different why the, the accusations against Christian capitalism do not work. This is why the accusations against the Western society and the ideas of Western society for capital is what we call for the whole community of Christianity. Okay? Just do not hold water. Okay? Because look at the look at any place else in the world. Look at the history of the world. Let me ask you a question. When Columbus hit the source of this continent, how many hops did it stay in time? How many colleges did the problem? Now, are we being culturally significant? No, we're just being factual. We're just being historic. Okay. Right? When the Portuguese hit the coast of Africa, were they met uh, with the steel ships? Were they met with guns and cannons? Were they telling them to go away? No, they weren't. Okay. And so, God gave to certain people and allowed for certain people to take, uh, let's say, the inventions of Chinese and turn them into uh, bigger inventions and better inventions. Okay? I'm about to talk about it today. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, but the point of that is that God gives us blessings as people so that we can be blessings to others. That's the point. This is what the socialists and the communists and the atheists say that they, they don't get. This is what they don't understand. Okay? That, that behind the news are a country pastor. Okay? The first constitution is the Western Hemisphere. Behind the Declaration of Independence, even though it was rebellious, behind the Articles of Confederation, the Dominion of the Constitution, is the concept right, that even the unbelieving founding fathers, who were not really Christians at all, but even they understood that uh, being a, uh, the idea of being a blessing to others, that we do this for the benefit of others, not just those of our nation, okay, but others around us. Okay, that's the understanding. You have to take, folks, you have to take a, a much bigger, wider view of history. To be understand how our system, how our system is developed, you cannot take this myopic view that that uh, you know Elon Musk, uh, you know, or Warren Buffett uh, represent uh, the Western society. That's a very myopic view. That's a wrong view. Uh, you can take the view uh, of the founders and the gold of that time. Uh, you know, even by the end of the book, uh, you know, John Locke, you know, these guys both were, who was not a Christian at all, but these guys understood that when we do something good, when we make a discovery, when we come up with an invention, whatever, it doesn't just benefit us, it doesn't just benefit our party, it benefits society. Okay? You have to take that one. This is what's wrong with our society today. It's a big thing that they're myopic and they're self-centered. They're, they're not thinking of others. They're not thinking of what's good for the society. They're not thinking of what's good for them. 
which is why voting is not happening. It's an unholy function. Because what is voting very really often becomes? Voting very really often becomes uh, what's good for me. You know, you know the question goes to what is what's the question that people are asking, of course, every four years. What's the question that every challenger asks about the incumbent every four years? <laughs> okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and, and are you better off now than you were before? Listen to that. Listen to that. Are you better off? Is that the point? No. The point is, is our country, is our community, is our city, is our state, is that is our society better off than you were before? That's the biggest question to ask. So this, this narcissism that's built into our representative democracy is a bad thing. I mean, it's hard to get a hold of it. It's hard to, it's hard to get a framework around it. It's hard to pull it down. Number 14 is, uh, as we're this chapter of the entry, we read about the benefits. There the Lord said along each row for some pure infants of the memorial portion to represent the bread that's being offered to the Lord by the fire. Now, what the interest represents? We went through this. We go through this every Good Friday. I use incense on Good Friday here in our church. Okay. I don't use it more often, basically, because you know, some people are a little irritated. And they walk in and start losing uncontrollably. So I would use it more, but I don't want to. I don't want to. It's okay. But the incense also is a representative of what? I've got Mark Murray. Prayer, that's right. Incense is a representation of prayer. I don't know about you, but you know, I think everybody else, I think you should take this for sure. Smells, smells are things I need to I've been to Old Folks Home, I've been to Jack Beds. Many times, we will have smell. We'll, we'll bring a person out. I, I remember one lady, one of my pastors, studying that I had in the early in my first week. She was an old German lady. And I was in the other folks' home in the middle of Texas. And she was about 30 miles from uh, my church place to meet with Margaret. And I drive there on that entire TV. And I had a little trouble with her or whatever. And I knew she was with me. Why? Why did I know she was with me? I was the only problem community. Because whenever I got to the point of devotion, I said the Lord's Prayer, she said the Lord's Prayer. Of course, that's good. And she said it was, and she was right along with you. Right along with you. So the thing with him, she was trying to give her a hymn song. She was off those type of things. I knew she was kind of with me, all right? But I remember one time Brandon in particular, so I used to think she died, and I the, uh, and the lady from Mr. Calvary took out of her body, and the daughter came to me and said, Right on time. Uh, she ain't a style of traveling and German. I was one of the other ladies who spoke German. I had just a twist in the end of her person. And, 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 uh, and she, she started, so she was just literally doing the story for when she was taking the trip. She was. I thought that was really cool. And the thing with me, one of the small projects to me that we need every Sunday never fails. When he uh, and he puts out his candle and the uh, smoke from the candle lies, I smell that, and I can drop that. The beauty is to the other two. Two five years old, we used to go to the Baptist church when I was little, and we used to come down and have a candle in the temple. And uh, my, my first time going to a Lutheran church, and I'm very significant to be here, uh, and my very first time going to it, this church, and I think it still does, it has candelabra on both sides of the cross of the, on the altar, and it's got six sections up and six down, six up and six down, and there's two big ones, so uh, it's uh, 12, 24, and if I took the 26 uh, uh, candles, and two the five candles, Man, I'm telling you, when all those 26 candles were put out, oh, there was a hand in the that just hung there in the cold. And, and I still, whenever I smell that smell, I'm drawn back to that very first picture sometime in the fall of 2000. 
Uh, note that the bread is not burned as a sacrifice by one another, but the instance was as a representation of the bread and as a source of prayer. And when our lives become full of bread, they are broken for the lives of others, we become a few more of our lives than the sacrifice. Think about that. Even before the bread is mentioned, I speak about further explanation about place and other dishes of pure gold, as well as the pictures of gold for the pouring out of offerings. We are not told the kind of offerings that are intended. It doesn't take much of a degree to understand that the pictures of gold are being used for such offerings. You will find those in the chapter 20. I would have done it for a detail there, but I want to save that for chapter 20. Um, so, uh, before I get to the question, which is, uh, why be here again? The Bible creator will say, all oh, I've been projected going after the, uh, the, the priest of the sacrifice of Dionysus. Uh, Dionysus, of course, is the god of wine. Of course, he was worshipped by a of wine, and I don't think it's the pouring of grace on the ground. Okay? Um, so we have the things here in the Bible, and this certainly is, 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 you can't approve one or another that. The Dionysian sacrifices were earlier than the tradition, or the tradition earlier than that. Um, and if you took up the food, I don't know what that is in the Bible. But then again, that's not the case. For all the food offerings, it's just that it is a great answer to it. You are basically giving it to God. You are basically saying, I'm not going to partake of it, but I'm doing this as a sacrifice. And, and when we do that sacrifice, what are we approving uh, also? This is something that also is not a little bit that needs to be seen. When we're giving a sacrifice to God, we are admitting and we are believing that it will be the first and abundantly. So whatever wine we pour out, whatever oil we pour out, whatever bread we make, whatever offerings we give, we believe that God said it's going to be the same so, question for this section: What can you can you do? Can you see between the four bread and wine? Can you kind of kind of want to talk about that? The things that are going to be out that you'd like to throw out here now that we've come. Now, there's no thought here about the kind of real presence, yet, that comes of course in the Old Testament. But it is sanctified, it is somebody, and it was, of course, the first of the priests to set forth the other kind of conception and teachings of God. But there again, uh, it is in there for Israel. So, the Lord's Supper, of course, is in there first of all for the believers. Second of all, for the believers to understand who God is. He is the Lord. 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 But those who believe in the Lord's Supper. I was a little bit concerned yesterday with the birth of the new Jews. New Greeks for the Hebrews for Jewish sex practice, and I do that the other day. And I said, Of course, I said, You are Jews on your Sunday school. I said, You are people who are part of the church, of course. I talked about the people in the pews that kind of come up to the altar. I told them about how I am from the children of the church, that kind of deal, and don't support that sacrifice. And I took it in the hand, so I said, I did not know. He took a lot of freedom. Wow, that's kind of amazing. Okay? And then, of course, I also had to admire that I was yet to take the time uh, to get to see that in the community. That there are people stepping into the world, wanting to have people in the world, uh, to make people on supper with them, uh, wanting to encourage them to get to that uh, with me. And uh, so we were sitting there and I couldn't get any traffic from the church on the church side. So, I will come to you in the Old Testament to 
Unless there's anything else, we will pick this up. Thank you. 